It's time for a cup of coffee with Will and Chris at Slumberland Furniture. From Slumberland Furniture in Osage Beach, here are your hosts, William Holtz and Chris Schneider. Well, 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 it's that time once again. Wow, Will, Uncle Chris here at Slumberland at the lake. And Uncle Chris, you love those shades. Oh, yeah, man. It's shootout week, baby. I got to bring the shades because you know why? I'm too cool for school, baby. It's true. Uncle yeah. Chris is too, uh, too cool for school. Try to say that for you 10 to say. times yeah, yeah. real fast. Man, so shootout <laughs> is here. Already mm. had some great events. Of course, the mini shootout uh, over the weekend. And, of course, the Hall of Fame dinner last night. Uh, five members inducted into yeah. the Bob Morgan Memorial Lake of the Ozarks shootout Hall of Fame this year. Uh, including that Dave and Connie Weir from Advantage Marine. Of course, we know them and also they're on the spotlight show here on lake tv this week it's a perfect week yeah. for that with them being inducted and then of course our buddy randy kent from marine Concepts. And we got to talk to the other day how yeah. cool is he man yeah and he's got the new uh, the old shooters he's my uh, new bromance i love that guy yeah he's he is cool man i'll tell you uh he loves to work on his cars and he put in that new sign out there but we get to see some of the things a lot of people won't get to see yeah. at that place so just a cool event and we'll have uh, those interviews with all of the 2021 class on Lake TV, so stay tuned and be looking for that. That's up right now. And then, of course, still lots of shootout events to come. We'll talk about a couple of those, including the big races uh, this weekend, which will be awesome. Um, but first, we do want to give you guys a little insight into what's going on here at Slumberland at the Lake. They've got a big sale coming up, so we're going to give them a quick break and come right back after this. One of our biggest furniture events of the year, the Labor Day Sale at Slumberland. Take an additional 25% off our already low prices. We have an incredible assortment of everything for your home, from sleep to sectionals to decor. This is totally you. Oh. Yeah, this is the winner. Well, hello Slumberland. Get your look for less at the huge Labor Day Sale at Slumberland. Yeah, speaking of Slumberland, they got some awesome stuff coming up for that uh, Labor Day sale. I need to get myself a couch and I need to get myself a new bed so I can start sleeping better. Man, and this is obviously the place. And then you see what they donated to the shootout silent auction? No, what did they donate? $500 gift card, good for anything. And of course, I'll tell you later in the show mm. how you can bid on those items because that is live as we speak. Uh, but first story of this week, a lot of shootout stuff going on, but some big things going on locally we need to touch on. So you saw the headlines, Camdenton School Board, they choose not to take $8 million of federal money from the American Rescue Plan. And at first glance, people are kind of infuriated by this saying, oh, we could help the teachers, we could help the students. But school board and a lot of people locally feel like there are some major strings attached. What can you tell me about this story? So the school board votes 4-2 against mm -hmm. uh, receiving the $8 million. Federal government be the uh, American Rescue Plan, like you said. Uh, funds would have come through the program uh, and board president Gail Griswold said they were concerned about the ambiguity behind the funds and wow, she is so right. I mean, and, and I know when you, you turn down $8 million, it raises a lot of eyebrows and stuff, but look at what the government is doing with, with all this, our tax money we're giving them. They turn around and they'll give it away, but it does come with strings. You have to wear masks, you have to do this, you have to do that, and you have to toe the line uh, if you take that money, and if you don't take the money, then you again have your freedom. You can kind of yeah. do what you want to do. Uh, so I applaud the school board for this. Absolutely. You know, I mean, they're not in dire need to have to have this money to survive. Some school boards are. Yeah. You know, they have to have that money to survive, and then they have to toe the line with the government telling them, you know, do this, do that, you know, and, and right. stuff like that. We don't have to do that. We still have our freedom. I, I applaud them. I think it's a great thing. It's, it's awesome. And, and like I said, a lot of people initially see outside free government money. It, it looks good, yeah, right? Yeah. From the outside, it looks good. It looks like something, oh, you're not going to have to pay it back. But there is a price that comes with that. Those strings are strings that you have to decide uh, where do you draw that line. Mm -hmm. And the school board 
at this point in time says we're not taking the free money we don't want to abide by your rules and your mandates and i'm sure some people on the board obviously two votes yes and maybe even some of the higher ups may not love that Ooh. decision but we got to be thankful we're in a position that this camdenton school district has the funding where they can say no to that and still be okay because some schools aren't and they still get to hold on to some of those very important liberties and freedoms there's even a name for it now that i i saw the other day you've heard of the old military industrial complex that president dwight Eisenhower Eisenhower warned Americans about back in like the 1950s that the the military industry had so much money they could bully everybody into doing what right. they wanted to do. Well, that seems to kind of have morphed into a medical yeah. industrial complex now where the medical industries and the CDC and whatnot are so big and powerful, they bully everybody into doing what they want them to do. And it's interesting that that has been noticed and it's even been given a name now. Yeah, it's wild, but it's exactly what's going on as you see that shift. Uh, okay, so second story, uh, interesting. This one was super popular, and what's wild, uh, so Misha comes under fire yeah. about saying no political statements, and that's what you would be led to believe based on the original post, and it was actually a photo from 2020 of a Camdenton Laker running onto the field with an American flag, a tradition that has been going on ever since I've been to Camdenton games. Right. You know, someone always kind of leads the charge with the American flag. Someone also has, you know, uh, another flag. So it's weird that you see this image, and I didn't even see this last year, uh, and that's when it was originally posted. But I'm going to let you take over and take us down this uh this storyline and show us how we got to this point where no one really knows what's right. going on. Right. Well, it started out as a social media thing, mm -hmm. right, where a parent uh, put out uh, something on, on social media saying, well, you know, this may be the first and last time uh, we'll ever get to carry the flag out on the field. Uh, somebody told my son they're not going to be able to carry the flag, you know, out on the field for Camdenton games anymore. So, of course, that blew up on social right. media. Uh, and a local, I think a local radio station was reporting this. And then somebody got to miss you. Uh, probably the Camdenton School Board went to Misha said, what the, what's going on here? Right. And Misha said, hey, that wasn't us. We didn't tell anybody they couldn't take the American flag out on the field. Somebody must have been acting on our behalf or something like that. So it's kind of a mess of what happened there. It's kind of interesting. Uh, but it was... Again, I'm really proud of our community for stepping up and yeah. saying, what do you mean we can't carry the American flag out on the field? That's a bunch of BS, you know, we gotta look into that. So I think, and I think it's important here to, to note that it really was bad for Misha that this story by KRMS was published uh, and it was put out the way that it was because first the parent uh, put that out and said it was Misha. Well, it turns out that Misha, as you said, Jason West, communications director, came out. They made a bold statement. Mm -hmm. They even listed KRMS and they listed Camdenton about what the situation was and said, we do not prevent that from happening. You're absolutely able to carry an American flag. And so they were really caught off guard and wanted to make it clear this is not us because it, it shed a real negative light in their direction. Yeah. You know, people were furious about it and they understand being the Missouri State High School Activities Association, being in Missouri where we're at, uh, infringing on those rights, especially of the young high school athletes is yeah. not going to go over well. So he wanted to make very clear was not us. So then who was it and who's acting on their behalf? Or did somebody within the Camington School District want to enforced that and wanted to pass the buck on to Misha and didn't realize the mom may come out and post a photo online and it become so popular. Yeah. So what do you think is going on here? You know, and it's interesting. The sad part about it is, is that a lot of us, when, when the story first came out, actually, you know, believed it could happen. In, yeah. in, oh, in, for sure. In our country today, because it's happened in other states and other places right. where they've told people, you can't pray before games. Heck, they've actually fired coaches right. for praying before games and stuff like that. So it's kind of along the same lines, can't carry the American flag. I mean, we've heard of it. We've kind of seen it around the country going that direction. So I think a lot of us thought, well, that's that's possible that they might have done that. I'm glad that Misha came back and said, that's not us, we did not do that. However, it did go on. Uh, there is another post later of a 
some research that was done, and there is a bylaw listed with Misha that made it look like that could be the case. But Jason West came out and said, no, we are not coming down on anyone for carrying the American flag. And of course, school board president Gail Griswold said we will have American flags. Good thing for Gail Griswold. Boy, they're keeping her busy over there on the school board, aren't I'll they? I'll tell you, man, wow. since you know she got elected onto the board, it has been one thing after another. They need to have Wild Will over there on the school board. Heck no, that'd be bad for everybody. <laughs> you and you included, you think you're stressed out and busy now, brother. All right, so cool story as far as just it depends on if you believe what you hear, but even though we've had a crazy surge in cases over the summer, summer with the Delta variant of COVID-19, Missouri COVID death rate is actually in decline according to uh, a story from Lake Expo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course, this is a big concern. Obviously, COVID, it's, we've kind of moved into the COVID era the last two yeah. years. Everything revolves around COVID, yeah. uh, you know, in one way or another. So uh, Missouri dealing with uh, a spike in the COVID-19 cases this summer. The state's highest uh, daily numbers uh, occurred over the winter last year, November through January last year. Those were the biggest COVID numbers here at the Lake of the Ozarks. Current case spike is significant, they tell us, but still much smaller than what happened last winter. Uh, and it looks like the trend for the summer is diminishing. Uh, the, the Missouri data is from the Missouri Department of Health and, and Senior Services. And, you know, we talked about it a couple of weeks. Sometimes it's hard to believe what you're hearing, yeah. what, you know, what the CDC says, uh, but these are the numbers they put out. Cases in Missouri uh, totals through August of 2021, 602,835, so almost 603,000 cases, just over 10,000 deaths. Uh, that is a death rate of 1.66%. Okay, according to these numbers, uh, if you want to believe them. Uh, summer COVID numbers in Missouri, uh, about 62,500 cases this summer in the state, 655 deaths. Uh, the death rate there is 1.05%, okay? So it was 1.66% according to these numbers last winter, down to 1.05% this summer. Uh, and some very interesting little factoids in the numbers. Below the age of 18, zero deaths. Mm -hmm. No deaths under the age of 18, okay? So all deaths for 18 and older. Uh, and the most coming, obviously, in the older age gro uh, groups, uh, from 70, uh, in the 70 to 75, it's about 13% uh, of the deaths, 75, 79, 14% of the deaths, and then 80 and older, uh, just over 46% of the deaths. So obviously there's a huge, th age plays a major factor in that. Yeah, and I think as you see, you know, some younger people catch the Delta variant, there is that scare tactic or that, uh, that attempt to scare people that, hey, this one's going to be worse, even if you are vaccinated, even if you are younger, mm -hmm. you know, it could still get you. But the numbers don't show that. The numbers show that as far as percentages, people are not dying as rapidly. And if you want to say it's because more people are vaccinated, well, I, I think there would be some arguing with that logic as well. Anyway, not to go down a rabbit trail, good news, less deaths in Missouri. Yeah, we could spend the, the whole show talking about we that. We won't, yeah. we assure you. Uh, but good news for Missourians, the death rate is on decline over the summer, but also think about people who are outdoors more. The sun with vitamin D, a natural vitamin that does a great job fighting and raising your immune system yeah. to, you know, fight that. So could be some correlation there, could not be. But yeah, that's a good point. Uh, if you hadn't heard, vitamin D is, tends to be a very good thing to take to, uh, you know, to keep COVID away. And decrease your inflammation, which as you guys know, uh, inflammation is a bad thing when it comes to your antibodies trying to fight the COVID. See, vax, I didn't know that. I learned all this from COVID Wild Will. Well, I learned it at the Freedom for Health event and then doing extensive research uh, covering, you know, ivermectin, vitamin D, zinc, alternative methods, hydroxychloroquine, things like that. And you just find some of that stuff out. And I'm actually fascinated by the mm -hmm. human body and what it naturally does when it contracts COVID and then what it does to fight that naturally. It's and there of, are doctors locally, maybe not in the hospital because they're not allowed to use right. ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine, but doctors around, oh yeah, they have definitely been prescribing. And this. not only prescribing it, but having overwhelming uh, results. Dr. Mm -hmm. Jenny Powell locally, uh, mm -hmm. she says she's had a 100% success rate wow. treating COVID with 
uh, those alternative methods. And you know what I love about her is she will not deal with insurance companies. She will not deal with pharmacies. Uh, she's one of the few doctors in the area, and actually that I know of, that uh, administers their own prescriptions because she doesn't want her clients to have to fight the insurance companies or the pharmaceutical industry. And so she does all that out of office. And wow. I'm telling you, she doesn't answer to anybody. No boards, you know, she just wants her patients to get better. And she's been on the front lines, you know, talking against some of the things going on in this country right now. So I wanted to give her a plug because Absolutely. I really love Dr. Jenny Powell. And, and you go back to that doing. medical industrial complex. Yeah. That's a way around that. Yeah. You know, she she's not playing ball with that. So yeah. that's cool. And I'm guessing a lot of doctors are starting to do that too. Well, and a lot that can't, you know, because that's true. probably going to be less money in it, mm -hmm. you know, because there's big money in writing prescriptions and dealing with pharmacies and there's incentives and there's cutbacks. And this isn't a knock against doctors, but Dr. Jenny Powell has made less because she chose to leave the institution of medicine and big organization and she started her own practice and so she sells medicines closer to at cost because she cares and wants her patients to get better and i'm not saying all doctors don't but when you're answering to the man it's really hard yeah. to be true to what you want to do back to the school board thing you know yeah. uh, do we want to take this eight million dollars with the strings attached or say no and be free same thing with these doctors you know if yeah. they're working for certain hospitals where they are ordered what to do by the CDC and the hospitals and they have their their hands are tied right right they can't use uh, ivermectin or hydroxychloroquine or whatever when you're outside of that you can and it it seems to uh, be working very well right all right so our next story uh, good thing is Missouri COVID death rate in decline so that's right. excellent all right Next story, cool uh, headline, gets people excited, especially if you like to gamble or you love the series Ozark, which we have back-to-back -back stories. Uh, a non-floating boat, New Missouri law, could be a win for Lake of the Ozarks Casino. Hmm. Uh, a a non-floating boat. Yeah. Okay. So does that mean a boat that's sinking or what? <laughs> exactly. I yeah, mean, what, what, it, what does that it? mean? But uh, So tell me what the story from Lake Expo <laughs> okay. says, because I saw the headline, got pretty excited. Is the lake getting a casino? No. Not okay. right now. Okay. Uh, so there's a new law in Missouri that defines a boat as a building with a small swimming pool inside. Yeah, sometimes you can't make this crap up, right? <laughs> new law in Missouri defines a boat as a building with a small swimming pool inside of it. How's that a boat, right? <laughs> but okay, whatever. So that could make it easier for casino developers in Missouri and at the Lake of the Ozarks. Just that law. Because so, it redefines what a freaking boat is. And it just right? has a small pool? Uh, yeah. So I, I mean, could go get one of the little bitty pools I at think Walmart? Got, I think there's like, you got to have 2,000 gallons of uh, water or something okay, like that. Okay, so, so there's so. other yeah, uh, there's requirements. A, yeah, there's a little yeah, bit. Gotcha. But it's like, what happened? You know, uh, so anyway, so in Missouri, and, and you like the casinos, right? So in Missouri, gambling games only allowed to happen on what state, state law defines as excursion gambling boats, right? can only happen on these excursion gambling boats located on the Missouri or the Mississippi rivers. And of course, Lake of the Ozarks, not on the Missouri. The Miss so that, that kind of takes uh, Lake of the Ozarks out of the mix right. uh, because of that law. So if, if any casinos are coming to Lake of the Ozarks, apparently they're gonna have to change that, that it's not on the Missouri or the Mississippi uh, rivers. But this is big business, man. Yeah, huge. I mean, Isle of Capri in Kansas City was built in 96 on a small lake about 400 feet from the Missouri River, right? It was close to the Missouri. The lake was built specifically for floating the casino and uh, the whole build, the lake, the casino, and all cost $110 million to build that, but they knew they were gonna make their money back. Oh, Big heck, time, right? Heck yeah, it's big business, and thanks for throwing me under the bus when you say I love the casino. I'll have you know, and I'll have all you know. I have nipped that problem in oh, the bud. Oh, good for you, so buddy, all right, hardly, yeah. Well, mostly anyway, you know, time and time, a little trip up there. Mind your business, Uncle Chris. All right, next story. Speaking of casinos and gambling at the lake, uh, you guys probably love the hit Netflix Ozark oh, you series, know, I have, Ozark. I've never seen one episode. Yeah, you and you and Aunt Michelle, you have to get on that. Uh, yeah, Maybe not your that. thing, but it, We're it is We're saving that awesome. for retirement, so we have something to watch in retirement. About 20 years from now, I'm not <laughs> letting that happen for at least 2025. 20, <laughs> All right, so Ozark season four is filming into October, so what does that mean for the release date, and how soon can people be watching season four? Okay, so everybody's waiting for this to come out, right? Season three was released 
March 27th of 2020. So it's been a year and a half since season three was released. Everybody's like, well, we're season four. Uh, the show is still filming. Yep. And uh, Variety Insight uh, says uh, the last shoot date is scheduled for October 8th of this year. Now that could be moved back, depending, you know, the, right. a lot of times there are delays and stuff, but it'll be around uh, mid-October, the final shoot date, but then they still have to do editing. You know, it's something here at Lake TV we know all about. Oh, you yeah. can go out and shoot the film and have Wild Will, you know, talking on camera, but then you got to put it all together and make it look good. That's where, right? that's where the money's made right there. There you go, absolutely. So they're going to have to do that. So right now, uh, they're looking at a release in early 2022 for season four. Awesome. It's, it's amazing how huge that series has become. Can't come fast enough. I can't You're wait. You're waiting for it, right? Yeah, I, I can't You actually worked on that show, right? Well, part of the first, just when they filmed at the lake for part of the first season, got to work with the extras and so did our DOP, Andrew Evans, and then our post-production specialist at the time, Ashley Davis. She also got to work on that series and she that actually catapulted her into doing that full time and she's still living in Atlanta and working with Larissa Michelle, the production supervisor wow. for that company. And so, yeah, it was a neat experience and that's not why, I mean, that made it cool, but I love it because it's just so entertaining. It's good. I and mean, you got to know Jason Bateman. I got uh, to talk to him a couple times. Yeah. He was super cool, really, really short and sweet, but just super nice guy. Of all the people that worked on that, he was like, the most not non-approachable. Isn't that amazing? You know, he just was pretty cool. But yeah, I got to I run him a couple of times. I was kind of his sister, Justine. Uh, oh, I'm sure. You know, Uncle Chris, over the years, you've had so many Hollywood crushes. <laughs> I don't even know how Aunt Michelle sits at home <laughs> and watches this show. It's got to be rough to be <laughs> Mrs. Uncle Chris, that's for sure. All right, so hopefully early 2022 for season four of Ozark. Our next local story. So audition period is over for the Pumpkin Chunk and Palooza's Got Talent event. Uh, for those of you that don't know what that is, it is a mid-Missouri-wide talent competition. Mm -hmm. uh, anything from ventriloquists to musicians to comedians to trapeze artists. Hey, you could even bring your animal and train it to do something cool like play dead. I don't know, but we took our audition tapes. It's been narrowed down. It will be narrowed down to 10 finalists, and those will be announced in early September. September. Of course, the event is September 25th for right. Pumpkin Chunk and Palooza at the Ozarks Amphitheater. Doors open at 6. The event starts at 7. Here's the cool thing. You'll get to watch all 10 of these finalists, and then you, the audience, for your $20 ticket price, will get to narrow that down to 5 with your first round of voting, and then you'll vote one more time for the overall winner, who will take home a $5,000 cash prize. So that's pretty cool. Uh, September 25th, mark your calendar, not just for that, but Pumpkin Chunk and Palooza that day. Right. So that will take the pressure off the judges because the uh, audience. audience is going to choose the winner. They select the winner. Wow. And speaking of your judges, uh, this guy will be judging KB, uh, another Lake TV uh, personality. And then, of course, Mary Kay Von Brindle yep. from the Ozarks Amphitheater will be your three judges. So looking forward to that. Hey, speaking of upcoming events, so shootout, of course, the street party. Uh, probably happened by the time you watch this. If you're going tonight, this the day one it airs. Go to the meet and greet on the Strip. Always awesome. Thursday, a couple of things. Uh, the Dino, first annual Dino car show on the Bagnell Dam Strip. Also have the meet and greet for uh, the poker run on yeah. Friday. Now listen, guys, if you're not signed up for the poker run, you can still do so the morning of poker run at the breakfast location, which is Captain Ron's, get there early. It's going to be an awesome event. You'll get to go around to eight or nine stops and build the best hand. All of this, of course, for charity, as everything here with the shootout is for charity. And then, of course, can't forget about Saturday and Sunday, the big races. Going to be epic. Going to see if American Ethanol takes that top gun yeah. yet again. And you can see that on Lake TV? Yes, you may. All different outlets, and we've got a list. Listen, guys, we're going to be on Charter Channel 197, Como Connect Channel 90. You can watch at MyLakeTV.com. You can also watch on our Facebook stream, which is brought to you by Polylift Boat Lifts. And then you can also add our Roku channel, watch there, and then on Amazon Fire Stick. So lots of places to watch the shootout on Lake TV. And this is a popular thing around the country. I know last Massive. year... Shootout week. I think we had over a million views, right? Well, impressions on, on Facebook. Stuff, yeah. A million digital impressions had roughly 300,000 mm -hmm. views over the two days on our different platforms. Don't want to throw that million views out there. I mean, because 300,000 is already an overwhelming number. You start telling people you had a million, Andrew will be beating me up in the parking lot or <laughs> something. But, and then also, two other huge events that are taking place with the shootout. Saturday at Super Cat for Kids. The live auction, guys, it's massive. You saw the video we had on the shootout Facebook page 
uh, with the two cars that Randy Kent has donated. There's also vacations. I think there's Disney trip. There's a replica Super Bowl trophy. I think last year that sold for almost three grand. Wow. So just amazing items. And you got to be at the Super Cat for Kids live auction, Camden on the Lake, Saturday the 28th. And then, of course, the live auction is huge but so is the silent auction this year amazing items put on and, by you yeah me and a bunch of volunteers and of course some amazing businesses that have donated big items and we ran around gotten to tell those you'll see those over the next few days and listen that auction is live right now as we speak as you're watching this it ends saturday in case we're past that point saturday the 28th at 2:30 is the cutoff so you want to go get registered for the Givi app givi google play store for your android users or the apple app store for you iphone people and then listen if you go to the shootout facebook page you can also click on the link in any of those videos and it'll take you to the website where you can register and bid on those items but lots coming up with the shootout also chris big weekend coming up next weekend for the Amphitheater, three shows and three nights. Brentley Gilbert, Hailstorm, Dwight Yoakam. Tickets still available, ozarksamp.com. And then, wait, it's hard to believe with all this shootout focus and everything that's happening. Is it football season? It's football season already, right? First, uh, the season opener, first game of the year for the local high schools this Friday night. Camden's in at home against Kickapoo. Yep. Uh, and uh, Osage with their new head coach, Shannon Jolly, on the road at uh, Fulton, I Fulton. believe. And then, of course, Selden busy, Springfield Central. Versailles, we've got the Versailles game Friday night, home against Knob Noster. Pre-game this year at 6.30, kickoff at 7 right here on Lake TV. Every Friday night throughout the season, yeah, we'll baby. have a game for you. Local teams, and we talk with Osage coach Shannon Jolly and Camdenton coach uh, Jeff Shore every week. We call it the Lake Area High School uh, Football Coaches Show. And you can see that Tuesday through Friday. They'll talk about the upcoming game and stuff. Uh, you can see that at 10 in the morning, 2 in the afternoon, 6 in the evening. The uh, Coaches Show brought to you by COMC, the great people at COMC. So yeah, baby. some great stuff here on Lake TV. Man, just telling you guys what's coming up on Lake TV this week took, you know, 15 minutes of the show, yeah. man. Killing some new content. Loving this time of year. It's our favorite time, the craziest time. Big shout out to our staff, I'll tell you, starting with, you know, Ricky Smith. He kind of does a lot with the shootout from Facebook to the website to a lot of the communications. He's been all over the place and he's kind of known. If I show up to any shootout events, they're like, where's Ricky? We got something important we need him to do. So, right. you know, he's just absolutely killed it. Of course, Andrew, Megan, uh, Daniel Carnahan, just putting in some big time hours. Yeah. Blake DiPaolo and uh, the editor Sweet. Tell you what, the crew has really grown and, and they've been asked for a lot the last couple of weeks and they've stepped to the table. So love what they're doing. And then also, man, Weekend at the Lake with Bob Spicer. That's yeah. still happening with the special shootout edition. You can watch that uh, right now on Lake TV. And then, of course, all the places to watch Lake TV we do want to touch on uh, in the next couple of weeks. We will be pulling off of Charter Spectrum. I want to make clear, uh, they did not raise our rates. We just are not going to pay those rates. And there was some information floated around there I wanted to make clear on that we, we just no longer feel like we need charter services for that much without an HD channel and without control of our guide data. So we say we're not gonna pay that price. We wanna make very clear, uh, they didn't raise our rates unjustifiably or out of nowhere. Uh, so I want to make that very, very clear. Uh, for Slumberland, where we host this awesome show, awesome show. Tell you what, just a, a few weeks ago, Chris, I was looking in here and I saw a couple pieces I like and they're gone. So my point is, if you're watching the show and you've seen these Slumberland videos, don't wait because Slumberland is, they're moving some product right now. Yes, they are. They have been a whole year. I mean, uh, this place is just hopping. It's busy. If you want furniture, anything, any room in the house, come look here first because they probably got it for you uh, or they can get it for you. All right, and coming in just a couple of weeks, each week, Chris and I, we will do our regular weekly NFL picks. We'll start from the top. We're not going to discuss it because we don't have two and a half hours. We will discuss the Chiefs game, but we are going to pick our 14 to 16 winners each week, and then we'll keep our record head-to-head -head throughout the year and see how far ahead of me this guy pulls. You're going to you kill me. Do you have an inspirational quote I you do. can end you with or anything? Real quick? I want a little inspiration as we go out to make some more shootout okay. magic. This is from Chris Everett, the old tennis player. Yeah. I shouldn't call her old. She says, uh, you've got to take the initiative and play your game in a decisive set. Confidence is the difference. Confidence, Confidence is the difference. That's go. from the great Chris 
ever. Well, that's a wrap for this week, guys. Hopefully we see you out at the shootout at Captain Ron's. Thanks to Jill Ray, Daryl Cunningham. This is Uncle Chris. I'm Wild Will. We'll see you then.